Zora Neale Hurston. Zora Neale Hurston was born on January 7, 1891 in Navasoka, Alabama. Her parents were John Hurston, who worked as a preacher and sharecropper, and Lucy Hurston, a school teacher. Hurston and her family, soon after her birth, moved to Edenville, Florida, a city where African Americans took refuge and created a community sheltered from the hatred of white America. Hurston's mother died when she was 13, and her father remarried a young woman with whom Hurston bitterly fought. This trauma, coupled with the oppression she faced as a black woman in 1920s America, later inspired Hurston in her revolutionary writing. Zora Neale Hurston attended the high school division of Morgan State University, an HBCU, and attended college in Washington, D.C. at the HBCU Howard University. Hurston, in juxtaposition of the all-black Edenville and her new, racially varied environment in Washington, D.C., took to anthropological views that were later expressed in her works. At Howard, Hurston delved deep into her literary passions and joined the stylist, Elaine Locke's Literary Club. It was around this time that the powerful arts movement, brought about by marginalized African Americans seeking to establish for themselves a national identity and a systemic status equal to white Americans, was brewing. This was none other than the Harlem Renaissance for which Zora Neale Hurston was a famous contributor. As a black nationalistic writer of this movement, Hurston emphasized African-American folklore in her work. Hurston wrote a multitude of short stories and novels during the Renaissance and throughout her life, such as Spunk, Mules and Men, How It Feels to Be Colored Me, and Her Eyes Were Watching God. Zora Neale Hurston passed away on January 28, 1960, at the age of 69. Hurston inspires us all today as one who stood up to her own trauma and the trauma of the whole black community through her remarkable work and showed the world how beautiful the productions of African Americans are. As Zora Neale Hurston once said, Sometimes I feel discriminated against, but it does not make me angry. It merely astonishes me. How can any deny themselves the pleasure of my company? It's beyond me.